Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced WordPress Theme Development. In this video, we're going to learn about how to create a date archive page. And this time, instead of using a standard pagination, we'll do some customization with the pagination. Okay, so let's begin. Let's move on. So we have the header. Header is going to display the date. We already have the date information. So date is currently empty, but depending on which archive page you're on, whether you're on yearly or monthly or daily, the date value will be different. So get the date is going to get you the date for that particular archive page. Uh, you need to pass different formats depending on which type. If you're on year, just get the year. If you are on the monthly archive, get the year plus month. And if you are on the daily archive, then get all year, month and day. So notice that you are on that. So that's why you are getting the full date, which is this. Okay, September 30, 2021. And how do we know and how do we decide to get this format? Well, all of this format is available on WordPress org. So you search for WordPress state formats, go over here, scroll down. And this is all where you get that information. So F. So take a look at F. F is basically January to December. That's the format. J is number without leading zero. And then Y is numerical digits for year. Okay. So you can grab the format depending on what you want. And that's how it's going to render onto the front end. So that's what's happening over here. We're just displaying the date. And then we're just running the loop. But this time we're using WP query. So notice we're not saying half post. So notice we are not just saying half post. And the reason for that is because we are creating our own custom pagination rather than using the WordPress default one. You could go with that approach as well. And in case if you want to use the Aquila page pagination function that we've already built, um, which we've already built, which is Aquila pagination, you could use that. But I'm showing you how you can achieve the first page and the last page options. That's why we'll use WP query so that it knows what page it is on and what post it is on. So it can keep a track of that. Okay. So then it renders the content to render all of these posts that you're looking at. Uh, in case if it's not available, it renders the content none. And this is our custom pagination function, uh, which we have created. I'll show you in a moment. It takes the current page number. So what will be the current page number? Well, it'll be, it'll have that information in the page variable, which I just showed you in a moment. A while ago where we printed out a WP query and we had the key available called paged, which contains the page number because that's the current page. So we need to know what, what page you're on, what page the user on, what page the user is on. We need to know how many posts per page. So we have already created constant for that. So we already know about it. So we're passing that information. We're passing WP query. We're passing the first page URL, which we have generated which is this URL and then the last page URL, which is this one. Uh, and then we are also passing an additional parameter to check if it's a query param structure that you, why we are passing the second one, the last one is something we will discuss later on when we are creating custom rewrites, etc. Okay. So ignore that this for a moment. Okay. Now let's go inside of the function and see what's happening there. So how do we get the previous post? Well, previous post will be current page minus one multiplied by post per page. Okay, so if the current page is one, one minus one is zero and zero multiplied by post per page, which is nine is actually zero. So there's nothing. So on, if you, the user is on the first first page, like if you go, if I go onto the first page, there won't be any previous because he's already on the first page. But if he's on the second page, so current page becomes two, two minus one, one, one multiplied by but if he's on the second page or any other pages, then then it's going to contain the previous post information from is going to be one plus the previous post and two is going to be the total number of posts, which is on this in which is under the current running query plus the previous post off will be article query found post, which means this off value is 75. That's so that's the total number of posts. And then this is max num pages. So that's the total number of pages. Okay. Then we add the query per arguments uh, page. And then, then we pass these parameters in the add query org uh, that gets added to the URL. 
and we have already discussed that when we were doing the load more and pagination etc uh, so you can watch that in the previous video i won't be going into the detail of that and this basically gets us the page num link and then the format if it's the so there are two different ways of showing this pagination one is by the slash format like we have now or we could also do something like you know question mark and page equals two and so on and so forth so that's why you have these two different conditions over here so query param structure which is basically with the question mark is something we'll probably do in future videos but i'm keeping it here for our future reference but just to let you know that if that's the case then we're just going to use this format with this you know question mark otherwise this format so in our case just focus on this part which is this one and this one okay because this is going to be uh, false we are passing false uh, from the function so we'll have the format we'll have the base and then inside of this div element we are checking if the total pages is greater than one and first page url is not empty then go ahead and print out this information which is showing so and so which is let's say one to nine of 75 okay <laughs> so we have the from information which is this we have the to information which is nine and then we have the off information which is 75 okay so those are all calculated on top all right let's move on first page information so in case if it's not equal to one which means you're not already on the first page because we don't want to show the first page link if you're already on the first page like you are on right now if that's not the case and the first page url is not empty then go ahead and show the first page url and we have already built that first page url which we passed which we passed to this function earlier on so we have that first page url showing so if you go to the second page you'll be able to see the first page here okay then move on moving on so this is the paginate link this is the same wordpress function which we used before so just just passing the base and format that we added on top which are these base and format it takes the current page number we already calculated that on top we already have that from the top and it takes the total pages again that also we have already calculated from the maximum pages from the query okay then these are the text whatever text you want to keep for the brave and for next you can use that and then for the last page number you need to ensure that the current page number is less than the total pages only then show the last page uh, because if you're already on the last page it doesn't make sense to show that right so that's what's happening here we already passed the last page url into this function which we built on top which is this okay and that's what we're showing over here right so that's how your function is built and that's how your pagination is coming so i hope you did like the video if you did please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already please do start my repository to support my work and do follow me on github my github handle is imran h sayed and my twitter handle is kori tang so i'm going to see you in the next video thank you very much bye, -bye.